Hello, I'm Joe Savage from DevHQ.net, and today we are diving into an HTML and CSS tutorial about the basics of HTML. So in the previous tutorial, we talked a little bit about what HTML is and what CSS is, and about what we're going to be doing in this tutorial series. And in this tutorial, we're literally just going to go into the HTML section, we're going to expand on it a little bit, and we're going to create a good foundation for future HTMLing and for infusing some CSS styling in with our structure a bit later on. So let's get started. Pretty much any web page that you see on the modern web today and its most basic form is just a text document that you might create in text edit or notepad or notepad plus plus or sublime text or nano or any one of the gazillions of text editors out there and all you do is you open up a file so I've just got a new document open here in sublime text 2 you control this you save it or command us if you're on a Mac or whatever and then in the file name field you just write whatever you want to call it so I've called mine index that's the classic name for a home page of a website and then just add .html so index.html or you can also use .htm and that's just the file extension for HTML files so once you've done that if you ever want to open your document in a web browser all the web browser is going to do is going to read what you've written in the file and interpret that and display some sort of output so whatever we put in here HTML code when we open it up in a web browser usually just by double clicking it depending on what OS you're on it will open up in a web browser and we can see what we've made and what it would look like if we uploaded it to some sort of server where you know maybe it could be even viewed on a domain so your website.com what it would look like so pretty much there are different versions of HTML which makes it very difficult for me to get started writing something so let's very very quickly talk about those before we write anything so there are three main versions of HTML you should be worrying about at the moment or not worrying about as the case may be because we've got it covered uh, those are classic inverted commas HTML which is kind of HTML4 and it's kind of what most people think of when you say HTML it's just regular elements there are some things you can and can't do but it's it's pretty flexible in the way it works and you'll understand a little bit more why uh, about why I'm bringing this up when we talk about the other versions because the second version is XHTML and it's a little bit like classic HTML in fact very much like classic HTML but there are a couple things you got to do so with some elements you have to add forward slashes in to show that they don't have ending tags and there are different things and they have different doc types and they're blah 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 pretty much it's a little bit more stricter a little bit more neater you have to close tags in certain orders or close elements in certain orders sorry and then the third version is HTML5 and that's kind of a bit of an iteration uh, on both of those two and pretty much it's the new version that at current, at the time of recording this video, everyone is talking about, oh, HTML5 is the new buzzword, HTML5 this, HTML5 that. It's a really, really, really nice version, and it's probably my favorite version. Uh, and it is the newest version, of course. So, uh, at whatever time you're watching this, probably the most recent version of HTML is going to be what you want to use, but it all depends on what browsers you want to support and how you want to write your code and blah, blah. So W3C, the guys that make all the specifications for HTML and CSS, say that any HTML document should have a thing called a doc type as the very first line. And what this does is when a web browser reads your page, it looks at the doc type and it says, ah, this web page is using version blah of HTML. So that way it knows exactly how to read it so it doesn't get anything wrong in displaying it. So during these basic tutorials we're not actually going to include a doc type even though technically we need one to be valid in the, specif the specifications that they set but it's not really a big deal because our page will work fine in the majority of browsers uh, if not all browsers and it should work absolutely fine so what we're going to do is in some later tutorial we're going to talk about doc types and we're going to go a bit more in depth on the different versions because I was kind of vague just then when I described it and then hopefully by then you should be able to make an informed decision on what which version of HTML you want to use for your purpose. But anyway, that was a huge ramble. Let's start writing some code. So apart from the doc type, because we're going to be excluding that, everything in an HTML page should be surrounded with an HTML element. Now we talked about this in the previous tutorial, but elements that can have stuff inside of them require two tags to represent them. We have an opening tag and we have a closing tag. And remember, all tags are just command words in angle brackets. So to start off with, let's just create the opening tag. And this is accomplished by just doing an opening angle bracket and then just typing the command word or the keyword HTML, which is the element name, 
then closing the angle bracket and then let's do a couple of enters and then let's just put in our closing tags so we just open an angle bracket and then you type forward slash HTML and then you close the angle bracket so the HTML keyword indicates that we're opening the HTML element and then slash HTML indicates that we're closing it so this whole thing we have here is an HTML element now everything inside here should be split into two sections the head and the body now think of these a little bit like your head and body basically the head does all the stuff that isn't directly shown but it's very important for the page to function properly in our case we have things like the pages title as in what's going to appear on your tab or whatever uh, the little icon that shows up for your page the CSS styling link and uh, various other pieces of information that aren't actually displayed on kind of the beef of the page but they're necessary to be there and then the body as you may have guessed kind of then kind of does all the display work it's going to have all your actual structure in there you're going to have your text in there images and whatever else so again these are divisible elements so they each require two tags so let's just add in all the tags for these and they are as you'd expect so just open up an angle bracket body and then we do slash body and for some reason I did body before head but we want the head to go before the body so let's just go head slash head now I note on formatting here some people like indenting these and that just means putting a tab space before all of them uh, so you could do something like that and they do this because these elements are inside of the HTML element and that shows that in a visual hierarchy so I do like indenting for the most part but I don't think these should be indented uh, it's all just personal preference if you prefer the look of that go ahead and do it uh, as I said it's all personal um, but what I'm going to be doing is I am going to be indenting the stuff inside the head and body so if we write something in here I do I am going to have that indented by my personal formatting preferences so any just piece of text that you write inside an HTML document inside your body will just be displayed as text on the page so if we just type something in here like hello my name is Joe uh, I own this website isn't it cool simple piece of text just like that we can save it we can open it up in a web browser if we just refresh this page here we see oh look the text we type in actually appears on the page awesome we have some results already so you can type in any text you like um, you can't just press enter to do line breaks so if I wanted to go yeah it really is on a new line that isn't going to be in a new line if we just open back up and refresh you can see uh, damn uh, and we're going to learn a little bit more about how to make things in new lines in a different tutorial called separating text which is coming up but for now let's just have some simple text on our page something like that will do fine and let's also add a title to this page just to illustrate the head <coughs> sorry the head section because we haven't really got much in there so the title element it's an HTML structure if you like and it's divisible and anything we put between the opening title tags and the closing title tags will be set as the title of our page so if you want you can pause the video try and figure out how you do this just have a guess okay have you unpaused the video or maybe you decided not to pause the video it's just like this you open up an angle bracket title and then you type in the title here so hello might be our title and then you just do slash title to end the title element hopefully this should all be getting a bit more familiar now uh, you may have if you had an attempt to do it done it on separate lines like this uh, but generally speaking people will bring this down to one line because you're only going to have a bit of text in there so perhaps we should expand this hello this is an HTML page let's save this and let's refresh our web browser which by the way can be any web browser you like whether that be Chrome, Safari, Firefox, IE, Netscape even, or uh, Opera, whatever you like, just open it up and it should work fine. So if we refresh, we can see up here uh, where the page's title is displayed in Safari, we can see it says, hello, this is an HTML page. Awesome, simples, it works. So believe it or not, this has been more rambled than writing code. This is basically all the code we're going to be writing in this tutorial. Uh, from here we're just going to be talking about some more terminology and also very very important concepts about the display property of elements which is a really like foundation core idea so three pieces of terminology I want you to pick up from this tutorial two of which you should already know so a tag is just like this opening tag here or this opening tag here 
or this closing tag here, or this opening tag here. It's just a command word or a keyword surrounded in angle brackets, or less than or greater than signs. An element, you should also already know, pretty much, it's just a thing on a page. In this case, we have the title element, which is represented by these two tags, and everything in between those. And also there are some elements, as we talked about last time, that are indivisible, and they're just represented by one tag. So we haven't got any of those on this page, but we'll, we'll be introduced to those very, very soon. Now the third piece of terminology which I want to talk about isn't something we've covered, but very simply, it's just markup. And a piece of markup is literally just a piece of HTML code. So this here is a piece of markup. You could say a whole thing is the markup. I might refer to it like that in a future tutorial. And hopefully you should know what I'm talking about because I've just covered it here. Markup, any section or any piece of HTML code. Now, the last thing I want to cover in this tutorial is a little bit strange and it might not seem to fit in right here but it is a very core concept and I want to make sure we've got it covered before we start needing to know about it later on and hopefully it should be easier in the future if you know about this now rather than later so basically every element in HTML has what's called a display property so this display property basically determines how it's going to be shown on the page and there are four main types of display properties. The first one is inline, and this is just kind of like what regular text has. It'll only take up the space it needs to take up, and that means if we go into our page here, if we had some kind of container element around the text and it had display property of inline, it would only take up this much space, this highlighted space here. It would only take up the exact amount of space it needs. Now, that you might not see why that's important, but hopefully you should do, because the second type of display element is block. And that means if we have a block element on the page, it's actually going to take up 100% of the width available to it. So if we just shove a block element in our body, it will actually go ahead and its box, because every HTML element is a box. Again, I'm really sorry, I'm introducing some quite con uh, complex concepts quite early on but this should come in handy uh, a little bit later on. Even if you don't fully understand it right now, hopefully it should just click in place when we learn about a couple more elements and I say this is a block element. But block elements basically take up all the width available to them. So if you give them a whole body that they can take up, they will go ahead and they will take up the width of the whole goddamn body. So that's a block element. Uh, things like paragraphs of text, when we learn how to do those, they take up, they take up all the width available to them. Now, the third type of element is inline block. Now, this isn't really easy to describe, but it's kind of a strange mix between the inline element and the block element. So, an image is an example of this, which is where we can set its width and height, because you can't set the width of, uh, and height of an inline element, although you can of a block element, uh, but an image at the same time only takes up the space that it needs. So, eh... Uh... It's a little bit strange, and there are also a bunch of other CSS properties which will only center inline and inline block elements, and hopefully it should all click in place when we learn about those properties in CSS and when we learn some more elements, which we can then associate. Oh yeah, this is a block element. Oh yeah, this is an inline element. Oh yeah, this image is an inline block element. Now the fourth display property is none, and hopefully this one you should understand, and if we just have any element and it has the display property of none, this means it's not going to display on the page at all. So some things you'll want to have the display property of none, and some things have this display property by default, uh, but you can modify all these display properties using CSS, and it's super useful once you get the hang of it, and you can say, right, actually, I want this paragraph to maybe display in line instead of blocks to get certain functionality, or whatever you're going to want to do with it. So that is the end of this tutorial. I have hope I've taught you a little bit about the basics of HTML, and this should have established a very, very good foundation so we can continue learning about different things in future tutorials. So if you want more information about everything I've talked about in this tutorial, if you're viewing on YouTube, there's a link to the related text tutorial down in the video description, or if you're viewing this on my website, the text tutorial is simply below where I've embedded this video. So that's the end, and have a nice day.